Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are fine and staying safe and happy. I am your science teacher, Ms. Farheen, and I welcome you all to your science class. My dear students, as you know that we have started chapter number two, ecosystem, and today I will deliver its fifth lecture. And today we will discuss how to create balance in an ecosystem. Uh, that means that when uh, interact, there are interactions between biotic and abiotic factors, then there must be a balance in the ecosystem. So by the end of today's lecture, all the students will be able to analyze the way these biotic and abiotic constituents create a balance to sustain any ecosystem. So my dear students, kaise when uh, the living things and non-living things of an ecosystem when they interact with each other, so how the uh, balance is maintained? Because plants, uh, plants ko jo hai, wo consumers khate hain, or kuch jo plant-eating animals hain, unko meat-eating animals khate hain, and they, uh, and uh, they also interact with their surroundings and their environment. So in sab ke darmiyan mein balance kaise rakha jata hai? We will study about that. Uh, so, my dear students, uh, let's recap what we did in the previous lecture. Observe and find out abiotic components of ecosystem from the following picture. Because in the previous lecture, we discussed about the abiotic factors of an ecosystem. So, quickly pause the video, have a look at the picture and select all the abiotic factors in this picture. Excellent. Hope you have selected all the abiotic factors, which are the non-living components in this picture. Now we will move forward. So towards the brainstorming. So my dear students, where do you prefer to live at certain habitat? Why? Aap kaha rehna pasand karte hain aur wahan kyun rehna pasand karte hain? For example, if I'll talk about, uh, I prefer that my house is market to the market. So all the things are ready, readily available to me and I don't have to travel anywhere else to go anywhere for all the necessities that I need. And I should have a pump in my house, a light bhi honi chahiye, so that I will have a comfortable life. So in this way, you want to have a comfort zone in your habitat so that you can peacefully and security के साथ जो है ज़िंदगी गुज़ार सकें। तो same case animals और plants के साथ भी होता है कि वो habitat में वो portion या एक habitat का वो हिस्सा जो है उसको हमेशा select करते हैं और they grow there properly where there are more necessities to, uh, available to them. So temperature is high, water is not avail available, air is dry, vegetation is poor. So that is why here very less life is available. Temperature is extremely cold, water is not available, air is cold, vegetable is, uh, air is not uh, abundant. So, here in these life is plants and animals, they are in very less quantity. Temperature is moderate, water is available, air is uh, pleasing, vegetation is um, in abundant. Vegetation in, is in abundant. So, um, ऐसे जगह पर जहाँ पर moderate temperature हो, ऐसी जगह पर life जो है वो ज़्यादा exist करती है, क्योंकि यहाँ पर तमाम चीज़ें मौजूद हैं which are necessary for uh, to support the life. Now in this picture you can see biotic and abiotic factors together, which are living here. Um, uh, you can see that uh, this is a tree where there are termites, दीमक जिसे कहते हैं, then um, Different carnivores are after the herbivores and uh, they are eating the meat. Um, the uh, plant eating animals are eating the plants. So this is how there is a balance uh, in this ecosystem. If all the grass and trees die, what would happen to the zebra and elephants? What would later happen to the cheetahs and hyenas? So my dear students, here you have seen that elephants and zebras jo hai, they were feeding on trees. And the uh, hyenas and cheetahs which are meat eating they were feeding on plant eating animals so now quickly think and tell me ke ye jo plant eating animals hain agar inke plants jo hain wo sab khatam ho jaye and they will die what will happen there will be no elephants and zebras then what will happen to cheetahs and hyenas Obviously, if there will be no plants, there will be no primary consumers and if there will be no primary consumers, there will be no secondary consumers, consumers or for example, we can say there will be no uh, carnivores. So, in this way, these tamam jo hai, ye ek balance mein aur ek circle mein food chains jo hai, wo bani hui hai. 
In today's lesson, uh, we will discuss about the interaction between abiotic factors and biotic factors and the balance between them, how there is a balance created between uh, the biotic and abiotic factors. So, components of ecosystem are biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are living and non-living. Uh, biotic factors are living and abiotic factors are non-living. So, the biotic factors are, first of all, look at the uh, non-living components, which are the abiotic factors. Sunlight, air, soil, temperature and water are the abiotic or the non-living factors of an ecosystem. Now, let us have a look at the biotic factors. Consumers, decomposers and producers, these are the living factors or the biotic factors of uh, an ecosystem. So, uh, the balance in ecosystem, the balance in an ecosystem refers to how many organisms it can support for long periods. If the balance is upset, the whole system uh, could fail. So, my dear students, a balanced ecosystem is such that it can go for a long time. It is not so that it can support life support na kar sake. As a system jo zyada life ko support karta hai, wo zyada der pa hota hai aur wahan ke jo inhabitants hote hain, wo zyada der tak survive karte hain. To ek success, successful or balanced ecosystem wo hi hai, jahaan par zyada tadad mein living organisms maujood ho. So, here you can see ke different activities hain aisi ya aise unbalanced tarikhe hain jin ki wajah se forest jo hai wo uh, unko destroy kiya gaya hai. So, water uh, should be in moderate amount and in good quality. Agar pani jo hai, wo uh, paudho ke liye bohut zaruri hai, unki growth ke liye aur animals ke survival ke liye bhi, to pani jo hai, wo moderate hona chahiye. Ye nahi hona chahiye ke floods a jayen. Agar floods honge, tab bhi uh, life jo hai, wo destruction hogi uske andar. So, moderate mein har cheez jab hogi, tab hi jo hai, wo plants or animals jo hai, wo behtar tarikhe se survive kar sakte hain. So, if there will be floods, Plants and animals will definitely die because of that. And if there will be less water, there will be scarcity of water. Uh, again, there will be no plants and no animals. So, बहुत ज़्यादा या बहुत कम चीज़ नहीं होनी चाहिए, moderate होनी चाहिए. Temperature should be optimum, यानी कि moderate होना चाहिए, बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए. उससे क्या होगा कि तब भी vegetation नहीं होगी, animals नहीं होंगे. और अगर बहुत high uh, low temperature होगा तब भी उसकी वजह से स्नो होगी और स्नो में भी लाइफ एग्जिस्ट नहीं कर सकती सो मैक्सिमम लाइफ जो है वो कहां एग्जिस्ट करेगी मॉडरेट टेंपरेचर में फॉरेस्ट वगैरह में अगेन एयर शुड बी मॉडरेट स्पीड शुड बी अप्रोप्रिएट मॉइस्चर कंटेंट एंड इज इन गुड क्वालिटी हवा जो है उसका تناسب भी मॉडरेट होना चाहिए बहुत ठंडी या बहुत गर्म या बहुत तेज या बहुत आहिस्ता हवा नहीं होनी चाहिए व्हेन इट शुड बी इन मॉडरेट quantity, then what will happen? Then the ecosystem will be balanced in the balance of the ecosystem. Soil should be nutritious and support organisms in their growth and reproduction. So again, we discussed that plants grow in loamy and clay soil because there are nutrients in the amount of 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 the amount. So that's how animals and plants living in such soils grow more better and have a balanced ecosystem there. Otherwise, what will happen? There will be no balanced ecosystem or uh, plants will not properly grow nahi karenge, uh, such as in sandy soil. Uh, and I request you all to please open page number 31 and 32 in your science, five, science 4 books. I hope everybody has opened the page. Now let's start reading. Put your fingers where I will read. Balance in the ecosystem. Ecosystems work on interdependence that is biotic and abiotic factors work together to fulfill each other's needs. When all the members are satisfied that is there is no increase or decrease in the particular factor, the ecosystem is balanced. In, an, in a balanced ecosystem, two types of interactions play a major role. So, before the interactions, let's uh, discuss we, what we have just read. So, my dear students, you have now read that when the tamam abiotic factors are in an ecosystem, they are moderate, then the ecosystem is ecosystem jo hai, wo balanced. Like the desert ecosystem is not a balanced ecosystem. Nahi hai. Why? Because there is extreme temperature, there is very less water, there is very less water uh, 
um, and there are very less plants and animals because of that. Uh, similarly, the polar region uh, ka, uh, ecosystem is not balanced nahi hai because there is also extreme in that temperature. So, when the whole abiotic factors are balanced and moderate, then the life can exist in an ecosystem. Now, what are the interactions in a balanced ecosystem? Let's have a look. Interactions among biotic and abiotic and biotic competence. Interaction among plants and animals. So, जो दो तरह की interaction है उसमें सबसे पहले जो life की interaction है अपनी environment के साथ या non living things के साथ पहली interaction वो होती है और दूसरी interaction है वो plants और animals के दरमियान में होती है जो वहाँ उस ecosystem में रह रहे होते हैं. So, interaction among biotic and abiotic factors. So, ecosystem में जो प्लांट्स हैं उसको ग्रो करने के लिए जो नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स हैं जो एबायोटिक फैक्टर्स हैं वो मॉडरेट होने चाहिए अगर वो मॉडरेट होंगे तभी जो है वो बेहतर तरीके से प्लांट्स ग्रो करेंगे अगर वहां पर वेजिटेशन बेहतर होगी तो डेफिनेटली वहां पे ज्यादा से ज्यादा एनिमल्स जो हैं वो ग्रो कर सकेंगे सो सनलाइट वाटर सॉइल टेम्परेचर एंड एयर इफ दे ऑल आर इन मॉडरेट कंडीशन प्लांट्स विल ग्रो मोर बेटर एनिमल्स कैन सर्वाइव मोर एंड दैट इज हाउ दे विल बी अ बैलेंस इन एन इको सिस्टम सो हेयर यू कैन सी देर आर फ्लावर्स इट विल बी ईटन बाय द कैटेपिलर देन फ्रॉग विल ईट द कैटेपिलर सो स्नेक विल ईट द फ्रॉग एंड आउल विल ईट द स्नेक सो आप ये देखें ये एक फूड चेन बन गई है और इसमें टॉप कंज्यूमर जो है वो आउल है सो इस तरीके से ये एक इंटरेक्शन है बिटवीन प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स कि प्लांट्स जो हैं दे आर द प्रोड्यूसर्स दे मेक देयर फूड बाय देयर ओन एंड देन अदर एनिमल्स व्हिच नीड एनर्जी टू ग्रो दे कंज्यूम ऑन प्लांट्स एंड देन अदर एनिमल्स ग्रो ऑन द प्लांट ईटिंग एनिमल्स सो इस तरीके से ये इनके दरमियान में एक इंटरेक्शन है Similarly, again, you have here environmental, that is, the abiotic and biotic factors in the middle of the interaction. This is an ecosystem where decomposers are in the soil, which are necessary for the plants. Then water is also necessary for the plants. And then there is also rainfall, uh, which stores water, sun energy. Then there are consumers, primary consumers and secondary consumers, which uh, support and when all the things are moderate, then they support the biotic factors in an ecosystem. So, let's discuss about the interactions among biotic and abiotic and biotic factors. We will discuss the first factor, the first interaction. Ko. Uh, quickly read with me. Abiotic components are independent of biotic components for their existence. However, they are necessary to support biotic components such as sunlight prepares food Air provides life gases, water moderates the climate and nourishes organisms, temperature regulates the climate and soil provides nutrients. On the other hand, biotic components depend greatly on abiotic components for food survival and reproduction. So, my dear students, if they abiotic factors, if they are moderate, they will life ko support life. When abiotic components are present in sufficient quantity, and in good uh, uh, sufficient quantity and in good quality, a balanced ecosystem is developed. However, if any of the components disturbs, increase or decrease, it affects all other factors. This disruption of if prolonged makes an ecosystem unbalanced. So, my dear students, agar ek ecosystem ke under koi bhi ek abiotic factor, water, soil, sunlight, temperature or air may say disturb hoga, increase ya decrease hoga ya absent ho jayega to definitely ecosystem jo hai wo disturb hoga aur agar ye zyada der tak disturb rahega to definitely ecosystem jo hai wo unbalanced ho jayega aur wahan jo life hai ya biotic factors hai unko disturb kar dega so plants, animals and decomposers uh, are the biotic factors sunlight Water, air, soil and temperature are the abiotic factors which interact together and um, that's how. So, now a uh, worksheet. Um, you can download this worksheet from the description box below this video or you can get it in print form by your teacher. So, my dear students here read this uh, situation given below. Identify the unbalanced factors from the following. Draw the conclusion as well. A fire in forest burned hundred of trees and animals. So, what will happen? 
flood remove top fertile soil of the area what will happen third desert in sindh is facing severe drought there is no rainfall since many years what will happen cholistan desert has least population the temperature in cholistan is very high so iski wajah se ab kya hoga so my dear students ab aapko conclusion draw karna hai ki agar ट्रीज और एनिमल्स जो है वो बर्न हो जाएंगे एक फॉरेस्ट के अंदर तो जो फॉरेस्ट का इकोसिस्टम है वो डिस्टर्ब हो जाएगा देर विल बी नो प्लांट्स देर विल बी नो एनिमल्स सो इस तरीके से इकोसिस्टम यहाँ पर अनबैलेंस हो जाएगा सिमिलरली अगर टॉप फर्टाइल सॉइल रिमूव हो जाएगी तो प्लांट्स जो हैं दे विल ग्रो लेस इन सच सॉइल विच इज नॉट फर्टाइल देन द थर्ड डेजर्ट में ड्राउट है रेनफॉल बहुत कम है इसकी वजह से क्या होगा जो वेजिटेशन है वो और भी कम हो जाएगी प्लांट्स विच आर लिविंग देयर दे विल ऑल्सो find no food and the ecosystem again will be disturbed and cholistan wahan temperature bahut zyada high hai jis high temperature ki wajah se rainfall kam hoti hai aur rainfall kam hone ki wajah se agar temperature disturb hoga rainfall kam hogi to animals aur plants jo hain wo dono hi yani ki biotic factors jo hain wo disturb ho jayenge so this is how you will draw conclusions from these scenarios complete it and submit it to your teacher I hope you have finished it. Now we will move forward towards your homework. Quickly note down your homework. You will do section B, question number four. Section C, question number three. So, up section B ka question number four karenge. Briefly describe the importance of balanced ecosystem, and then from section C, you will do question number three. Describe the role of plants, animals, and biotic and abiotic interaction in a balanced ecosystem. यानी कि एक बायोटिक और ए बायोटिक इंटरेक्शन के अंदर बैलेंस्ड इकोसिस्टम में प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स का क्या रोल होता है यू हैव टू सजेस्ट दैट कंप्लीट इट एंड डू इट इन योर होमवर्क सो फॉर द रैप अप वाटर शुड बी इन मॉडरेट अमाउंट एंड इन गुड क्वालिटी टेम्परेचर शुड बी ऑप्टिमम Air should be in moderate speed. Should be have appropriate moisture content and in good quality. Soil should be uh, nutritious and support organisms in their growth and reproduction. So, my dear students, आज हमने ये पढ़ा कि जब extremes होती हैं किसी भी uh, abiotic factor के अंदर या वो increase या decrease होता है तो uh, ecosystem unbalanced हो जाता है. एक ecosystem balanced ecosystem वो होता है जो maximum life को support करता है देर तक. So, ऐसी जगह पर ऐसा ecosystem बनाने के लिए तमाम एबायोटिक फैक्टर्स का मॉडरेट होना जरूरी है सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू हैव लर्न वॉट इज अ बैलेंस इको सिस्टम इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द बैलेंस इको सिस्टम एंड इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स यानी कि हम नेक्स्ट इंटरेक्शन पढ़ेंगे जो प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स के दरमियान में होती है आज हमने बायोटिक और ए बायोटिक फैक्टर्स के दरमियान जो इंटरेक्शन है वो पढ़ी है अब हम दूसरी इंटरेक्शन नेक्स्ट क्लास में पढ़ेंगे जिसमें प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स आपस में कैसे इंटरेक्ट करते हैं इन एन इकोसिस्टम टू मेक अ बैलेंस दिस विल बी डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास अंटिल देन कीप एवरीबडी अराउंड यू सेफ हैव अ गुड डे थैंक यू सो मच एन अल्लाह हाफिज